Hi everybody, I'm Mike. Uh, this past weekend on Board Game Geek, I asked the internet, you other geeks, uh, for some advice about hardware to use for spreadsheets for use at the game table when playing 18xx games. And with your advice, I rebuilt this laptop with Ubuntu Linux uh, to do that job. And in the same forum thread, uh, a bunch of players asked for if some people would would give sort of a idiot's guide to using spreadsheets for 18xx and I thought that I could pay it forward a little bit by providing such a video so that's what this is for if you are already using spreadsheets to run your 18xx games I don't expect you get a whole lot out of it but feel free to come along for the ride and provide any feedback and help me answer questions in the thread underneath this because hopefully we'll have a good discussion so let us start by having a look at this. This is a spreadsheet that I put together myself uh, for use in playing 1846. It is similar to many similar spreadsheets that you can find on the internet on the 18xx Yahoo group or in other places and I'll provide a link to this spreadsheet in the description of the video um, so you can grab a copy and play with it yourself. Um, quick introduction to this. Um, so as a general rule in these spreadsheets there are cells in white that are meant for the players who are using it to fill in. There's some here, there's some over here, there's some more all over, and there's other cells that are grayed out. These cells have formulas in them that will automatically compute things to uh, help speed your game along, and you shouldn't mess with those cells in general. So, starting from the top, the first thing you want to do when you're playing a game is, uh, here, and this is Google Docs, um, you might have one that's an Excel spreadsheet, in which case you could sort of skip this step, but you want to make a fresh copy. So in Google Docs, that's file, make a copy, give it a new name. I'm calling mine Demo 1846 Game. Um, you probably do not want to do this, share it with the same people, because if you're pulling it from a public place, you want it just for yourself. So make sure you have edit permissions on the document. All right, so that's done. The next thing to do to start your game is to fill in the names of the people you're playing with. You probably want to do this after you figure out the order you're sitting in at the table and who's starting with the priority deal, which will become obvious why you want to do that in a minute. But for my sample, I'm going to play a game with uh, Sam and Eric and Mike, that's me, and John, and nobody in the player five seat. Let's stretch these cells out a little bit so that the names are readable. Alright, that's all you need to do at the start of the game. You're ready to go. Um, usually the first couple of rounds of the game are simple enough that you don't want to bother with the spreadsheet, but sometime around the second or third stock round, you'll want to start using this to track your dividends instead of doing them out by hand. So now I'm going to start describing what parts of the game flow you interrupt and change in order to use the spreadsheet. The first thing you have to do is that at the end of each stock round, you need to write down who has shares of what stock. And there's a fast way to do that it requires two of the people at the game table to work together. One of you is typing into the spreadsheet, the other is looking at the stocks everyone holds. So um, this is why you wrote down the player names in order. So starting with Sam and going around the table from Sam to Eric to Mike to John, uh, Whoever is at the table with me looking at the table is going to call off. So I'm going to say we're doing NYC first and then uh, whoever's helping me is going to say Sam has two, Eric has three, Mike has zero, John has zero, two are in the market and I'll say back three are in the treasury. That cross checks what it does and the spreadsheet has computed that automatically. Once that's done, which went pretty quick, I'll say okay Grand Trunk and the answer is Grand Trunk's not open yet. Okay, see you know. Sam has zero, Eric has four, Mike has four, John has zero, zero in the market, two still in the treasury. And you repeat like that for every company. I'm just gonna fill in some fake numbers here. Uh, I haven't given any stock to John yet, so we'll say he's heavily invested in the BNM. Uh, and you do that at the end of every stock round to get these numbers correct. Then you just start playing the operating round. The first part where you have to change the way you're used to playing the game is at some point during each company's turn, the president's going to say, oh, the NYC runs for $7 a share. And usually at the 18xx table, what happens then is the 
president says, ooh, I have six shares, I'll take seven times six is, um, hang on, 42. And then somebody else across the table says, I have three, I get 21, and you all grab for the money and it takes time. Uh, you have to change that behavior. You have to trick yourself into not doing that. And the president just says to whoever's running the spreadsheet, NYC runs for, 20, or for seven a share. And you type into this cell, operating round one, seven a share. The thing is, that the players don't actually need this cash yet because they're not going to be spending money until the stock round comes around. The company needs the money right away though because it might want to buy a train or lay track over a mountain next turn. So you read out of this cell, the company's getting $21 a share, you, $21 flat, you give it that money right away. Um, if you do a full withhold, then you're going to put $0 here because none of the shareholders are getting anything. Um, this sheet doesn't automate the 50% payout, so you have to do that by hand. If it's $7 a share, that's $4 to the shareholders, and you just give 30 to the company. Um, and then you keep going. The CNO's turn comes up. CNO maybe runs for, I'm going to put this back to 7. CNO runs for 12 a share. BNO has the steamboat and runs for big money. They run for 19 a share. And you get to the end of the operating round. And you still haven't done anything. You've paid the NYC and the CNO and the BNO for the shares that they had in themselves. You haven't given any money to players yet, and that's fine. You go into operating round two. The companies run again. NYC runs better this time. It gets up to nine. CNO runs a dollar better because they upgrade a city. BNO, I don't know. BNO ratchets up really well. They run for 24. These are just numbers I'm making up, but uh, that's what you that's what you do. So as as those take their turns, you pay them directly. Now we've reached the beginning of the next stock round. And what we find is that the spreadsheet has done the math for us. And the amount of money to pay each player is written right here. And with the numbers I made up, Sam has done very poorly. But now instead of paying each player six different times over the course of the operating rounds, you pay each player once at the beginning of the stock round. Sam gets 32, Mike gets 148, or Eric gets 148, Mike gets 186, John gets 258. Once you've done that, you can just clear this out. Play the stock round, re-fill in the grid of shares, go back into the operating rounds, do the same thing. And in this way, you save a bit of time as you're reaching for the poker chips and trying to do multiplication of one and two digit numbers in your head a lot less. That's the first good thing this spreadsheet does. The second one, is make it so that you don't need to count out the bank in advance at the beginning of the game. Um, the sheet has the starting bank, which for 46 varies with the player's player count, so this spreadsheet has been cleverly programmed that if you put a blank in for a name, it will reduce the bank. If I put in a P5 back in, the bank jumps up to 9,000. I will blank that back out. Um, but near the end of the game, companies are running for big money and more shares are in the player's hands. So let me make these numbers bigger. There. And we'll make up some nice big late game sorts of dividend payments. Okay, so we've just run a set of ORs. We're back to the beginning of a stock round. We're about to pay uh, all the players. Now, I could hand Sam 1,199, and Eric 1,690, and myself 1,850, and John 1,933, but you look at this thing and it's showing the bank only has $818 in it. Bank's getting awfully low. Now is a good time to check how much cash the players already have, ask them to count it up and type those numbers in here. Uh, let's say Sam has 500 bucks, and the rest of us had some, some piddling amount because we spent all our money in this share round on stock. That will reduce that further. The other place where money could be is companies could be holding money. Let's see the NYC totally failed to save up for a permanent train and has $400 sitting in its treasury. Well, now we can see that the bank is about to bust and go negative. That means the game's over, it's time to stop. And using this technique, 
sometimes it's blindingly obvious at the end of the OR set that the bank is busted and you don't even need to ask for player counts, for cash counts. Sometimes you're close and you need to do the math and sometimes it's blindingly obvious that you need to keep playing. Um, but the spreadsheet helps do that and then you don't have to count out cash at the beginning of the game. The last thing that the spreadsheet does that's helpful is the spreadsheet will compute the end game score. So then you do need the cash count from the player and the last thing that you need to do is you need to put in the finishing stock price for each of the companies. Uh, I'm going to make some numbers up again. And I think all of the numbers that I'm recalling are actual stock prices that your company can have in a game of 46, but forgive me if I'm wrong. So now the spreadsheet will take the cash that you were holding, the income from dividends that you were getting from the two ORs that you haven't actually handed out chips for, and the value of your stock portfolios, add it all up into scores, and rank those first place, second place, third place, fourth place, and if you have a player five, it'll do fifth place. Uh, and then you don't have to do any math at the end of the game, you can just shake hands all around, and if you're the sort of people like me who log plays, you can copy the numbers out of the spreadsheet, and you're done. So that's a very basic intro to using a spreadsheet for your 1846 game. If you're playing another game than 46, there's lots of uh, spreadsheets out there you can find. Thanks. Bye-bye.